Okay, so I really don't need to see Scott. So my camera's turned off. Now to see Scott, what do I do? Talk me through this. What? To see Scott on the monitor. No, it'll show in the countdown. Yeah, okay, so I'm good. I'm not sharing anything, so I don't need to share a screen. Do you have this set up your way you want it, or can I? Yeah, you see this all up. Hit that, hit that link in my testimony. I've already done it. Did you share it or, or click on it? Okay, yeah, there you go. All right, let me put it here the audio. Test one, two, test one, two, testing one, two, four score and seven years ago. Our forefathers set forth on this continent a new nation conceived and liberated and dedicated to the ideals that all men are created equal. Crap, I got nine minutes. I can go to work at my desk. Why is my mic hot? Scott, can you hear me? Hello, hello? I can hear you. Hey, Scott, can you hear me? Your microphone may be on mute. Hey, Scott. I'm trying to make this chair taller. Can you guys hear me now? Yes, yeah. you have an echo. All right, hold on. You have an echo, too. I am an echo of your former self. Oh, great, it came up a court half an inch. You still hear me with an echo? Yes. It's not, it's more like a barrel, not an echo, from what, how I hear it. Have echo can cancellation turned on? Let me see. Sounds like there's an um, How about now? Can you hear me? Yes. Still sounds like a barrel, but not as not as bad, maybe. Try it now, Scott. Hello, hello, hello. Much better. You can hear me? Yeah. Okay. You hear an echo? Not anymore. Okay, that was on your side then. All right. Okay, let me see if you guys can hear this video. Yes, I can hear the video earlier. Let's see if you can hear it now, though. It's supposed to be. It is. <laughs> you waited. Is there a pre-roll that you want me to do, Scott? No, I just have the outro, so that I'll do.
What'd you say, Noah? Hit mute, Ken.
I see Mike Wien Wiesner here. I see Norina Falta here. Hi, Norina. Norina was on our uh, uh, Amazon Live. Oh, really? Screen. Okay. Yep. I think she might still. Well, maybe she's not still on. Maybe not. Anyways. So you all set to go there, Kent? Yes, sir. Cool. Well, set to go where? Live or northward? <laughs> Everything. Not ready to go north yet. everybody, Kent Martz here from Explore Scientific. Welcome to First Light Chronicles. And I have a special guest with me today, Mr. Scott Roberts. Hey, Scott, how are you doing? Fine. I don't know how special it is, but <laughs> anyways, um, I'm good. I'm good. I'm still, you can see my hair still messed up. This is from uh, the 100th Global Star Party. Uh, but uh, how, how yeah, long did you, how many hours did you go? Well, Facebook cut us off at eight hours. Okay. So we went past eight uh, hours. Uh, I think we might have gone nine or 10 hours of broad, solid broadcasting. So, you know, uh, thankfully, YouTube hung in there. I think maybe, um, you know, Twitch and Twitter might have hung in there, but Facebook has a hard eight hour cutoff. In fact, you look at it, and it and on the stream and it goes, it was actually eight hours and five seconds. They, they shut it down. So, you know, sorry, guys. It took five know. seconds. <laughs> it took five whole seconds five for the algorithm seconds, to flip the know, switch. That's right. That's right. But we had an incredible lineup of like over 20, I think around 25 speakers, something like that. Um, and uh, it was just really fantastic. Um, you know, uh, who, who, who can I say that was on? I'll, I'll, I'll read off everyone that was on on the show. Let's see. Um, it's a great go. list. This is a standing list you put yeah. together, Scott. It was David Levy, Seth Shostak from, you know, Comet Discovery, David Levy. Seth Shostak from uh, SETI was on. Uh, the father of laser-guided adaptive optics. That these, This is the system that controls the... Uh, the way stars are presented to uh, a sensor um, by deforming a mirror uh, and having, having a system that looks at uh, laser light scintillating off the ionosphere. Okay, and this corrects out the optics on these giant telescopes. Uh, that guy's name is Robert Q. Fugate. He was on. Um, Terry Mann from the Astronomical League. She did the door prizes, but she, and we have some great door prizes that will be given out from that. Uh, but Terry Mann had her own program about seeing beyond. Uh, John Abbott, Coll uh, John Abbott College's um, uh, Professor Kareem Jaffer was on, and uh, um, uh, Lou Mayo is also a professor of astronomy. He was on. We had Charles Ennis, who is the president of the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada. He's also a famous astronomy author with over 20 books. He was on uh, Marcello Souza from Brazil, uh, you know, professor of astronomy down there. Uh, Nicholas Arias, uh, Nico the Hammer is what we call him. And Nico was on as well, talking about Jay West. Uh, Norman Fulham, telescope builder extraordinaire of... Uh, the world's largest amateur telescopes, uh, Norman Fulham was on, uh, and also sang two songs to us, which was really cool. Um, we had David Eicher, uh, editor-in-chief of Astronomy Magazine, Molly Wakeling from Astronomy's Universe, who had been studying for a PhD and all the rest of that, and apparently achieved that 
yesterday uh, on the same day as the 100th Global Star Party, so it's awesome. Um, uh, Dan Higgins uh, from Master World TV, um, and uh, you know, um, you know, special guests also on that as well. Um, uh, you know, seeing or not seeing in the dark. Um, Chuck, I forget. I'm sorry. Um, uh, Jason Gonzel, the vast reaches. Daniel Barth from How Do You Know was on, also a professor of of science and astronomy. Uh, Connell Richards, young Connell Richards was on. Uh, John Briggs, uh, world famous John Briggs, who does restores antique telescopes and all the rest of it, he was on. Uh, Cesar Brollo from uh, Optical Optica Sirocco down in Buenos Aires uh, was on his rooftop. Uh, uh, DT Gautam from Nepal, Adrian Bradley uh, from Michigan, uh, behind the curtain was Michael Carroll, who's a space artist and uh, didn't, he just wanted to hang out with us for a while. Uh, the one that we missed, we did miss one of them, and that was Karina Latelier, uh, and that was just uh, due to a screw up on our side. So sorry about that, but we'll have her on again. Um, and uh, who else? I think that. I think that actually covered it, but it was, we were burning up the wires. <laughs> I you called it really at about 2 a.m., something like that. So truly global. Absolutely. Just truly, yeah, truly uh, global. Lots and lots and lots of information. Uh, it was just really cool. You know, fire hose of information packed in just a, a few hours there. So. Yeah. so we've had comments. Mike Wiesner said, howdy. Uh, a couple of people have said great global star party uh, book. I guess that's Book Davies. Hi, all. Haven't seen oh. Book in a while on my broadcast. So, Book, good to yeah. see you yeah, uh, nice. joining in. Uh, so, Paul Burkhardt said GPS 100, quite impressive. Thanks, Scott. It truly was an impressive lineup of uh, symposium, if you will. I mean, it was. Yeah, it was. Um, you know, it was uh, Half day symposium or full day, actually, you know, if you count eight it. hours, yeah. Well, that was over, it was over eight. So let me let me look at uh, what YouTube says about that. Um, and have you analyzed the audience at all, Scott? Have I analyzed the audience? Yes. Yeah, that, that the numbers. It had to have been up there pretty good. Oh, I haven't. I haven't yet. No. Yeah. The, you know, usually what happens is, is that you get a live viewing audience for people who can watch it live. Um, but you also get uh, you get people that come back and watch it later. You know, and those, that audience is much bigger. Uh, yeah, yeah that's where the audience is long term. Exactly. Exactly. So uh, 100th Global Star Party. You started at 2 o'clock, 2.30, something like that? That was the early log. On. We actually started broadcasting at 3. At 3, okay. <clears throat> so Goodness, digging for the data. time it was. And, 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 folks, you know, to put together that slate of people, I mean, there's, there's people that Scott has on email saying, hey, we're doing this, do you want in? But then to get the people that aren't normal uh, part of the regular global star party crowd, that takes a massive amount of work uh, and, and leg work and time. And, um, you know, he worked on that for three weeks, Scott, something like that. I mean, you put a lot of effort into putting that slate of speakers together. No, it's certainly, certainly took a lot of time uh, to get it all done. That's for sure. Um, it's hiding hmm. from you. It is hiding from me. Oh, it was nine hours, nine hours, 25 minutes and 33 seconds is what it was. So I've been looking, Scott, I've been looking for my sun catcher yeah. for uh, the TED 80, an old TED 80 that I used to take to star parties. And I think I found it just now. It looks your like it's catcher. over your left yeah, my sun catcher, solar oh, filter. Your filter. 
Right, your yeah, I think. No, nope, that's not it. That's not it, that's, right? That's because mine has foam inside of it, already cut out to fit the telescope. So, right. I may be, I may be taking that one with me, Scott. You get can some take foam. it. Yeah, get some, yeah. Um, get some pieces for there. You'll probably want a, a you know, a different um, frame or something like that. But that's yeah. I'll, I'll get what's right. have a new one made up. Yeah. So, anyway, so uh, nine hours. That's a that's a <laughs> long time. Hey, right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it takes. That's, it, that's, you're, you're right. It does take a, a lot of time, but um, you know, I love doing it. Uh, I love the um, interaction. Uh, you know that the audience gets uh, from all of these people, and uh, it is. Um, you know, it's I. I yeah, I, I feel a duty to. Uh, to do it because it helps support the community that supports us, you know? So, right. You know, that's, so, that's and Mike, we Mike Wiesner says, Scott's also putting a lot of effort to line up speakers for the David H. Levy, Arizona dark sky star party. Yes, right. indeed. That's coming up in September. It's only a, seems like hours away almost sometimes. Right. Uh, at September 21 through 25 in yes. Oracle, Arizona. Uh, you yes. still got time to register. There's plenty of room. Uh, if you're going to come out, uh, Oracle uh, is embracing it. The town of Oracle, the Oro Valley oh, Chamber of Commerce, they're making it a community event, right? This yeah. is yeah, this, this is a this community is event. There's there's going to be music. There's going to be art. Um, businesses are getting involved. Local businesses are getting involved in it. Um, when I say they're getting involved, they're going to have like you know, little mini events all on their own, you know. Uh, so there'll be places to go in town. Uh, one of them is a kind of a, kind of a, you know, fun bar kind of atmosphere. So you can go to the watering hole, bar. so to speak. Yeah, that's right. You know, so, uh, and hang out and talk about, uh, you know, the cosmos over a beer or something. So, um, so, going to be good dark skies the weather should be yep. good doing some bird yes we'll do some bird watching uh we're gonna it's gonna be a good time uh jim norwood about 15 seconds after i logged on the feed froze uh sorry about that well jim 15 seconds after you logged on today jim or last night just curious which feed that was so uh <laughs> that's coming up we'd love to see you uh join us there it's real simple Go to explorescientific.com and up in the search bar, type in Arizona Dark Sky and it'll pop up the page. Uh, $149 to register. And yeah. then that gets you access to all the events that we're putting on. And yeah. then, uh, and then there's, gonna, there's that does community events that are free as well. So there's going to be things to do literally for the whole family. You know, so if your family yeah. likes art, if they like, uh, you know, the, the, the desert scene, if they like, um, uh, you know, one of the places has like, um, uh, it is a, what do they call that when you're, you know, you get into like this, this uh, cable, you know, zip line. It's, it's a zip, zip line. line. Exactly. They have a yes. zip line thing out there. That's really cool. I think it goes all the way to Mount Lemon. Okay. So, uh, Oops. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, the, and they have a cafeteria restaurant kind of thing there, which is kind of cool. Uh, well, Jim says, so, I reloaded and it works now. Yeah. Thanks. So, uh, for housing, there's Airbnbs, there's no hotels in Oracle. Clocus yeah. Hotel Motel type of thing is in a Tucson 45 minutes away or an hour away, 45 miles away. Uh, so, we have a Biosphere 2. Uh, you can reserve rooms or casitas yeah. there through us. It's not a hotel. They call them casitas. Yes. It's, they, they are elaborate dormitories, okay? Uh, no no, no towel service. Yeah. yeah. However, no towel uh, it's nice. It's clean and yeah. uh, it's nice. And, um, you know, and you'll be staying at Biosphere too, too. So how cool is that? You know, so. Two, ten minutes away from Oracle State Park. So very, very close as well. Yeah, we so, promise not to lock you into Biosphere 2 for three years to see how you make out, but, you know. Well, if you want to try and volunteer for it, I mean, I'm sure Arizona is looking for more <laughs> volunteers. So, anyway, Arizona State, uh, University of Arizona, it's not Arizona State, it's 
University of Arizona. University of Arizona. That's runs right. That, runs the big that. So, U of A. That's right. So, so you know, uh, if you want to dry camp, there's dry camping going to be available there. Uh, so you can't can't haul your RV. Uh, they don't allow that camping. Although uh, uh, Scott and you and I are going to have our RVs there as base camp. Basically, they're uh, making yeah. an allowance for us, but that's about it. So yeah, they're looking forward to. It. Yeah, would there's love probably no plugins or you know yeah, water. Or it's dry camping. Nope. nope. It's totally off grid. Yeah. You know, so yep. for us, there may be a spigot there where you can get water, but I think that's and bathroom there. And that's it. I'm not sure about the water, but I know there's bathrooms there. But look, you're going to a place where it's dark skies. Um, yeah. You know, this is not. This is this is a million star resort. Right. That? I just coined that there term. You, go. Every, you know what? It, it reminds resort. me of. I used to do star parties. I used to coordinate once a month star parties at a place called Little Wear Valley in the Anza Borrego State Park. There was absolutely zero facilities there. Okay. Um, it was just a road. Uh, you did have the facility of pretty dark skies, okay, and the facility of hanging out with your best friends out there. So it was a lot of fun. Right. Um, we did tons of star parties there. Uh, the star parties sometimes got as large as 200 people, you know, with, with their telescopes, with their rigs and all the rest of it. Um, so that was, uh, that was a lot of fun. Uh, very thankful uh, to the park rangers at Anza Borrego State Park for letting us do that. Um, but we did have to be very conscientious. You know, they, they really wanted, uh, you know, uh, kind of a no, no trace uh, kind of scenario. So you couldn't just have trash out there. You know, you had to pick up and uh, that was the deal. Um, but this is, this is better uh, as far as um, uh, support for the people that are there. They really are set up for camping where Anza Borrego kind of wasn't, okay? They didn't have like camping spots there or anything like that. Uh, so people would literally pull up with their car, set up a tent on the side of the road, okay? Uh, which was a dirt road and, um, and then we could do that. But, uh, uh, but, uh, you know, I, I see a lot more advantages uh, to the Oracle situation than what Anza Borrego had because there was no little community there really to speak of. Uh, there was a store and a gas station, uh, but that was it out there. So so Mike just said, Wiesner just said the closest hotel, motel, I didn't catch what it was, is, is in Catalina, Twenty. 25 miles away. Yeah. Hotel. Yeah. So, right. All right. So Scott, Scott, as yeah. you well know, I'm getting ready to go You're to a star to party. Nebraska star party, right? Absolutely. Yes, sir. So, um, be leaving out Saturday morning, just pull my trailer up there. And, uh, you know, we've talked about before on what it takes to get ready to go to a star party. Yeah. I've been working on a list of just stuff I'm taking from here, you know? Um, so we'll answer this question. Offered, Said, do you ever see rattlers or brown recluses there? Uh, yeah, you're out in the desert. And there's there's rattlesnakes uh, in Arizona. No, I have I have spent a ton of time out in the desert. I mean, California exactly. is in the desert, right? And I uh, I saw more rattlesnakes near my condo in Orange County, okay, than I saw out in the desert. Because there's uh, water there. <laughs> there is water, but also too, you know, uh, animals like uh, that live in the city are more comfortable around humans, I think, than than uh, yes. real wildlife is. You know, so those guys are going to be hiding from you, okay, not waiting for you in the dark corner so they can bite you, but they really don't want anything to do with you at all, okay. Right. So. Right. Both uh, they're, they're sounds not going like to have for dinner, you know. So if you're not dinner, they're not going to waste their energy, their precious energy that they have to save up yes, for the moment that they can get something. Yes. Both both of those scenarios sounds like my neighbors. <laughs> yeah, great neighbors there. So you know, talk about spiders. You know, there's going to be spiders there too. Look, you know. But again, even that, you probably have more. I, I have more spiders in my home in Orange County, California, than I did out in the desert. So we did a story once. I don't. We I don't know if in the newspaper, maybe in the other newspaper, 
did a story once as a column about a woman who was out in the national forest and there was a widow maker, which is a tree that's fallen over and hung up in, a, in another tree. And she yeah. called the forest service and asked him to send a crew out to cut the tree down because it might be dangerous and fall on people out in the middle of the national forest. You know, if you'll go in the national forest, you're, you're part of the ecosystem now and you got to look yeah, out for yourself. You're, that's right. You know, don't, don't stick your hands underneath shady cactuses, right? I mean, there's, if your snakes are going to be in specific areas, pay attention. Uh, we treat our snakes as neighbor, as Wiesner says, and they are. I mean, you're sharing their habitat. And right. Mike Wiesner gets javelinas in his backyard, coyotes, all manner of birds and hawks. It's just part of living out in nature, and it's part of it. And, you know, um, I don't worry about brown recluses. I don't worry about snakes. I mean, we have rattlesnakes here in northwest Arkansas. We have I, I, live in, I live in Fayetteville, Arkansas, and I've seen brown recluses in my apartment. Okay, so yeah, yeah, we you know. Exactly. I don't. You don't have to go very, very far, <laughs> you know. So, uh, so let's talk about Nebraska, Scott. I'll start a spreadsheet yeah. writing down, you know, the stuff I'm taking, the stuff I need, the eyepieces I have, so that when I go to start loading the truck, I'm checking off everything that goes in because I don't want to miss anything. Uh, mm -hmm. Jim Nord, a ranger in Colorado, asked us to move our trailer once because he identified a big tree that might fall on us. Well, yeah, that's absolutely, you know, I always, uh, I've never been in a, in a, in a wild campsite, but most assuredly you want to look up and see what's going to fall on your trailer because Trailers and big branches don't mix too well, just like houses. So I've got a spreadsheet of, you know, everything that I'm going to take. And I've okay. got a house spreadsheet, you know, a food spreadsheet, telescope spreadsheet, equipment spreadsheet, because I'm driving. How about first aid? Uh, I have a first aid kit already in the trailer. I have a okay. first aid kit already there. That's that's pretty extensive first aid kit. Now, I, I need to actually upgrade to a, to a, 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 a wilderness first aid kit. You know, that has, I mean, you know, you don't ever want to use a tourniquet, but it's far better to use a prepared tourniquet that's easy to use. Yeah, instead of trying to rip apart to, something to make one. Exactly. Pulling your belt off or trying to find a piece of rope and cut it and a piece of wood that's strong enough to twist it down tight enough. It's sounds you know, to make like, a windlass out of it. Sounds like you really just need to take a really sharp saw. <laughs> For what? I'll let I'll let Scott ask. I, I know where he's going with this. There, actually, there was a movie of a guy that was hiking oh, somewhere, I, I think in okay. Utah or something like that. Yep, got pinned. <laughs> he didn't have got a saw, pinned, and he cut his own leg off or his yes, own foot arm. off. Yeah, arm, arm. It was his arm, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, but, arm. And oh yeah, with arm. A arm. But look, if something that extreme happens to you. They're going to make a movie about you and you're going to make millions. Okay. So well, if you yeah. really need a bump for your attitude, you can just watch that movie backwards. And it's about a guy who is stuck, but frees himself miraculously and goes back to a normal life. Okay. You can, that's, yes. I, All right, yeah, sorry, that doesn't no, actually yeah. work, you know? Yeah. <laughs> So Nebraska Star Party is at Merritt Reservoir uh, in the wilds of Nebraska. Um, and by wilds, there are not very many houses. Uh, I think it's like 25 crow miles to Valentine, Nebraska. And otherwise, there's effectively nothing out there. There's It's Bortle One Skies. It's good Bortle One Skies. And, Scott, I've known you, you've seen this, and I have seen this, if you stand there with your back to the Milky Way and let your eyes adjust for 45 minutes or an hour, you can move and see your shadow diffuse on the ground move with you. Yes. Uh, a, the Milky Way casts a shadow. It's truly astounding to see. Uh, and it is very dark up there. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, John Johnson, good friend of ours. Uh, has said that over 300 people are registered this year, Scott. So it's going to be uh, awesome. potentially a really, really big event out there. So it's if you don't, if you have time and nothing to do next week, 
head out to Valentine, Nebraska. Go to go to search for Nebraska Star Party. Get registered and show up mm-hmm. out there. Bring yourself. Bring your telescope. Just come. You know, uh, it is quite um, you know uh, an event. And dark skies. If you've never been before, this is a place to do it. Scott just posted a link for a blog we have that he's written on preparing for uh, a uh, star party. And by this is not a star party where you're going out, you know, 45 minutes from your house. This is this is when you're going on a journey and you want to take everything with you that you need. Uh, and, you know, um, it's uh, you don't want to forget eyepieces. You don't want to forget uh, camera batteries. You don't want to forget T rings. And I am literally uh, tomorrow going to say and Friday going to work on getting all the stuff gathered up and then put it in a box and tape all the eyepieces or, or put in a box, label what's in there and then tape it closed. So I don't inadvertently miss a piece. Uh, so, uh, uh, Alfred says you have to be wary watching the movie backwards. You sometimes hear demonic words. Yes. Bas- back masking, uh, you know, obviously caused a lot of problems for all of us back in the eighties when bas- back masking became a thing. Uh, so I'm looking forward to it. Going to be doing uh, representing the company and doing some astronomy out there. Going to take the old Canon uh, 5D Mark III out or whatever it is, and uh, put it on a tripod and let it go. Star Trail, uh, Star Trail images. Make sure Star you Trail take images. the right media, Kent. If you have to have a specific type of SD type card. You can't just use a uh, just a regular. Okay, card. we'll check on. I appreciate it's, that. We'll check on that and yeah, check figure out where to get one you, from. Yeah, let's do that as soon as the broadcast is over with. Okay. okay, so yeah, but there again, that's Paul points out something I hadn't even thought of. Make sure you have a, the correct media for your camera, uh, especially if it's a cam- if it's a camera you don't use all the time. Make sure it's got a card in it. You don't want to get in Valentine, Nebraska, and then have to have a special card that you can maybe get here in Northwest Arkansas, but Valentine, Nebraska is probably not going to have it. Um, Jim Norwood, can't I have to step away from a, where is the star party you're headed to? Jim, it's the Nebraska star party. Uh, it's in Valentine. Well, it's Southwest of Valentine, Nebraska at Merritt reservoir. Mm-hmm. Uh, interestingly, the reservoir, the campsite where all the viewing happens is in the mountain time zone, but the dam, if I remember correctly, is in central time zone. Since most people coming to it uh, are from the east, they operate on eastern time, although literally you cross the time zone line driving around the lake. Uh, But Jim, you know, um, uh, if you're free um, from where you live, it's just a nice, easy drive north uh, and then a little bit west, and I think you know you could join us up there. Um, if you're interested, give me a call and we'll talk about it. And I can give you some tips and stuff. But uh, it's a uh, starts technically Sunday night, but really Monday. They have field schools and beginner schools during the day. Uh, they have meal plans you can buy, although that may be too late now. Not sure, but they have meals you can buy. Um, a uh, host of prize giveaways. We've donated some stuff, and uh, the organization has bought uh, some things. Well, uh, they got stuff there for kids, um, you know, to do. Uh, they're having an astrophotography contest, uh, and I think some other photo contests as well. It's going to be, you know, interesting. Uh, and um, the Weather looks like the temperatures here in the middle of the United States are going to mitigate down in the uh, potentially down in the low 60s at night. Uh, maybe partly cloudy, but uh, uh, partly cloudy is not cloudy, and I'll take partly cloudy any time. Wade Printy, you need a corn husk daub. Uh, that would be sort of fun to to make a uh, to make a shroud look like a corn husk, you know, or, or you know, uh, that'd be interesting. Make it look like a corn cob. With the husk still on it, um, it's yeah, I'm going to give a shout out to the to uh, to the country here. Gas prices are heading down. Okay, 
But I found one of the things I check on for gas prices is a site called Gas Buddy. Okay, GasBuddy.com. And apparently, and I didn't know they had this, but I think I'm going to sign up for it, is they have a pay card, okay, which can save you like 25 cents a gallon, you know, um, and there's no fees or anything like that. Uh, the card gets connected, uh -huh. I guess, to your, um, to your, like a debit card or something like that. And um, so something worth so, to check into. I know prices here in Northwest Arkansas are down in the 385, 389 range. Uh, 425 was about the most we saw here, but um, apparently, you know, farther west you get in big cities, it can get pretty spendy, uh, you know, and be pretty $51 pretty to put gas in my car. 51 bucks a year ago it was like 22 dollars i have a nissan versa that uh we are not taking to nebraska because you can't pull a trailer with it uh has a 11 gallon gas tank uh and will go 350 uh up it's getting 35 miles to the gallon so 350 to pushing 400 miles on one tank of gas and boy, mm -hmm. it sure feels good to fill that up when it only, you know, doesn't take long to fill up 11 gallons, uh, you know, and you go, boy, that's a full tank. And, uh, but yeah, you can't pull an RV with that or a trailer, a travel trailer with it. So very far you can. <laughs> that's yeah. true. Ah, uh, the weight you, you could, you could probably, I don't know if you can even pull real light T. You might be able to pull an ultra light teardrop or something like that potentially. So. Uh, Jim Nord, I topped out at almost $150 fill up. Yeah, it can be pretty pretty painful. Way pretty in the East Texas Piney Woods around Dallas, $375. So, yeah, so prices are coming down. Let's hope that continues and they stay down because that is a driver of the economy. So um, I've got plenty of packing to do, Scott. My wife's going with me to this star party. She's looking forward to it. Cool. Uh, last hurrah, last hurrah before Natalie has to go back and teach a whole new passel of kindergartners how to exist in a uh, organized environment, you know, of school. So there's many things that she gets to teach in the first couple of weeks that some kids have never had to experience before. So that's always interesting. And she's looking forward to that. I think it'll be her 36th seventh year of teaching yeah so anyway that's what i've got to talk about scott i've hit the end of my rope the or end my, of it not the end of oh. my rope my head i was i didn't break my neck i was gonna I say break my I neck. hit the end of my rope like um, yeah. six months ago yeah something like that six months ago yeah what is it like oh, that's right. beyond the end of the rope it's it's, it's a swing in good time yeah, it's yeah, like Freebird. Right? Time. He's... <laughs> you're Freebird at that yeah. point. Yeah, you're Freebird if you. Yeah, you want, you want to be. Yeah, that's right. So Harold Locke says saw five dollars and fifty nine cents yesterday for regular. Harold, I think you're in California. Uh, when I was out in California a few weeks ago, I did see seven dollars a gallon out there. You know, so that was kind uh, of crazy. Uh, Robert, the C. Uh, OO of the company just got back from Denver where he was seeing, went to see Tanner and mm -hmm. he said gas out there was eight bucks a gallon in the Denver or in the Vale area. Uh, yeah, but that's Vale. Yeah. I mean, my God, you know, yeah. it's probably yeah. like dollars a gotta... gallon uh, two years ago. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, specialty places where rich people live and shop, they're going to charge more. They just do. Okay. Uh, you know, you come out to uh, uh, here in Arkansas, Missouri, Mississippi, you know, uh, the average wage is not that high and they adjust the prices accordingly. So, you know, if you're really angry about it, you might campaign with your congressman for a national gas price, okay, or something like that. But that would just be another way of kind of breaking down the uh, free yeah, enterprise. If you're if you if you're in Vail, if you're in Vail, yeah. where you can have a meal for two and your ticket's four hundred dollars, you don't worry about paying for eight dollar gasoline. That's just that's just yeah. How you might be mad about it. Right there. 
a what, you know. Yeah. So well, so what? Yeah, those cats yeah, are probably driving Teslas anyway. Yeah, they, those don't use fossil yeah. fuel at all. Oh wait a minute, they do just off the electric grid. So anyway, <laughs> we uh, burn your car actually burns coal. Uh, it can does as yeah. as we convert to renewable resources that will change, but. As uh, things go right now, if you're in Northwest Tesla's Arkansas, probably burning coal. Yeah, if you're yeah. north, if you're in Northwest Arkansas, and you're driving an electric car, you're driving a coal burning car. Yeah, just say. Now, if you're in Russellville, you're driving a nuclear know, power burning car. house. <laughs> yeah, you it's have a way coal better burning than house. Burning. A coal burning house. You know, there's nothing I can do about it. So yeah. I guess well, you can have solar I mean, panels. There is, you know, yeah. I mean. I could be like uh, Abraham Lincoln and use a candle for my light, you know, and yeah, not have a television and don't use the internet and don't run all of my computers and all my electronic gadgets. I could do that. But, In other words, enjoy enjoy being blasted back to the Stone Age. <laughs> yeah. Highest price in California. It's not so bad, you know, so. Yeah, I mean, you know, that off-grid living, you know. You know you, you, when we would go camping in Boy Scouts, you were a Boy Scout camp, right? I mean, Absolutely. we didn't have. So back in our day, we didn't have cell phones. We didn't have GPS devices. We didn't have all that stuff. You had a analog okay. compass, right? You had Absolutely. a Boy Scout knife, okay? <laughs> a, paper, uh, a paper map that paper if you're lucky, map. a paper max. That was wax coated. We didn't have flashlights so with batteries. We had flashlights with batteries, you know. Yep. But, uh, and we had like a transistor radio if we wanted to listen to music or something. Transistor radio that ran off a nine volt battery. But yeah, that was so the I can remember those electronic gadgets. I can remember being at Camp or the Scout Camp here. That's along the Buffalo National River. Buffalo yeah. National River is an international dark sky park. Camp Orr is inside the boundaries of the International Dark Sky Park, and I'm working with the council to uh, uh, get all of their lights there dark sky compliant. Uh, so mm -hmm. that's ongoing. And the reality is most of them are going to get turned off because, Scott, I said, half the half the camp, the latrines, which are literally pit toilet latrines, don't have electricity. And the other half do, and they have a light in each one of them. And I was like, so apparently the boys who use those down there find the latrine with no trouble with no light on so we can just disconnect unscrew those four lights and they're like yeah that's a good idea and so uh there's a lot of most of them are just gonna get turned off but anyway i hear those kids going to summer camp and they wanted their mama and just cry and cry and cry and no you can't call your mama there's no payphone. Uh, and it was, you know, it was hard know. for the kids. <laughs> you, I'm sure you have experienced the same thing. And anybody that's been to summer camp, church, scout, band, whatever, boy, it's just some of those kids. I don't, are remember, just, I don't remember anybody crying because they were away from home and Boy Scouts. Uh, most of the time, we were just so thrilled to be out camping and, you know, just uh, have, having a great time out in the woods, you know, so fishing, yep. Yep. all of that, yep. so. Uh, rappelling, canoeing, backpacking, uh, fishing, uh, uh, shooting guns. Wade Back in the day, you didn't have to feed your vehicle hay and oats. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Wade. <laughs> uh, my my son has some hay burners that they take to uh, riding parades and stuff. So absolutely. So they enjoy Hello? their horses. Oh, Scott's Hi. taking Hi. a phone call. So uh, anyway, if uh, uh, go to a star party. Yeah, you know, find Ken. a place, and if you've never been to a big one, figure out a way to make it. Yes, Pauly. Can I, uh, I? I'm obviously going to ask a question, so there's that. Um, the question I have is, where around in northwest Arkansas, for example, am I going to be able to see the Milky Way for when – I guess I, I, I can't go to Kansas City anymore. The gas cost was just too high, and I can't get uh, to Kansas you City. You could, you could head out uh, on four twelve between uh, here and and Salem Springs, that west of Tiny Town, 
and find a side road, old highway 68 or somewhere like that. Uh, you're going to just pull off any side road like uh, Robinson road uh, uh, or go up uh, north to. Uh, well, you, uh, you and I went over where Fairmount. Cameron, our, uh, Cameron, uh, Missouri was remember. Yeah, up north, yeah. So how uh, you, am I going to find something that dark? Oh, you just uh, down, go to, I use lightpollutionmap.info and uh, just start looking, right, and find places. It's not that far. Withrow, Street, Withrow Springs State Park, if you go to the pavilion, uh, is going to give you some really good views. Uh, has a state highway running past it, but you'll get good views. You can get over away from the highway and... And the headlights won't buy, bother it, you that much. Is it going to be that dark, though? Thanks, Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to get that far away from here. Are you calling up that, going to share that picture? What picture? Light, light, go to lightpollutionmap.info and scoot um, it over to. Uh, and so I just saw Beatrice is with us. Hello, Beatrice. Nice Light. to see you with us today from uh, beautiful Not what? Belgium. Lightpollutionmap.info. Map. And do, sadly, do, do. you know, light pollution is a completely preventable thing, and I'm sure most of the people who are watching the broadcast right now are aware of it. But look, folks, really it, it, there's no reason to shine light up in the sky. Period in story. And that's what light pollution for astronomers is all about. Don't shine light up in the sky because there's nothing <laughs> for it, no reason for it. You're wasting electricity, which is increasing your carbon footprint. Uh, it's about the right amount of light at the right time of the right place with the right right reason. That's what it comes down to. Uh, the there's map. all sorts of things to study uh, about um, glare and uh, light trespass and things like that. But it's ultimately the right amount of light at the right time for the right place and the right reason. And if you don't, there's no reason to shine light up in the sky. Zero and all that light does is make the sky start glowing and makes all the beautiful things up in the heavens disappear from human from from the human understanding you know the light, the sky in the past 20 years has degraded so much and uh, I yeah but that's fixable it. that is fixable it's all fixable that's why i said yeah. scott that's it's completely reversible it's reversible yeah. it's reversible. Yeah. now this is not like gonna... you know carbon a carbon that might be released into the atmosphere or something like that uh, where you know we've gone too far in fact if we get smarter about our lighting and and stop foolishly it's it's like it's like having your kids you know we're, we're all like teenagers that leave water dripping uh you know uh leave leave the freezer door open you know where your parents are going yeah. nuts okay Hey, you know, uh, stop being afraid of the dark. Okay, em uh, embrace the dark for what it, all the all the great reasons, the wonderful, you know, life giving uh, reasons that that we that we have it. You know, right. it, it is. Uh, you know, it, it took us. Uh, you know, uh, took you know humans and animals. You know thousands or millions of years to adapt to uh, the, uh, the the whole program of us having a planet that revolves once every 24 hours and gives us night and 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 day um so you know this is something where uh you know we need to we need to be smart about it you know and um i think um i think that i, I can't remember what the uh um it was about feeding the homeless and I think it might have been Mike Wiesner. Mike, you'll you'll have to chime in here and and let let the audience know. But I think that uh, there was a study made somewhere, uh, and Mike Wiesner might have done it. <laughs> that if people actually reduce the amount of light that they use to where to actual real usable light lighting levels, okay, because uh, you know of course we need it, you know, but uh, but usable that the money that would be saved could feed the world's homeless. So if we want to attach a feed the world, uh, you know, uh, benef tax benefit, you know, a credit, it could be done just by shutting off the lights, you know? So, because people get all up in arms 
about the billions that are spent on something like the James Webb Space Telescope, for example, or the billions that we spent on the Hubble Space Telescope, for example. Mm -hmm. But the many, many billions of dollars that could be saved by doing safe or, or, or intelligent lighting, okay, um, could but, probably but Scott, every Everybody equates bright lights to safety and better. Brighter no, lights are better lights. More light is better and safer. Many, no. many people do, but it creates shadows. It creates a place for people to hide. There's all sorts of, you know, proof out there. If Scott, if light, and I don't claim this as my own, but I'm going to steal it and use it. If light was an antiseptic for crime, there would be no home burglaries during the daytime. Yeah, when yeah. New York City wouldn't have majority. any crime at all. Las Vegas wouldn't have any crime at all, right? Exactly. When 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 do most home burglaries happen? In the middle of the daytime, the where there's the plenty daytime. of light, right? Yeah, they need okay. to see what they're doing. They need to see what they're doing. I mean, so okay, I'm going to really down down for a minute. All right, uh, if I have uh, it's dark out and somebody's like hiding between two cars. All right. And then they run across the yard, okay, because I've got a big Merc light going on there, uh, and try to break into my house. Then I might see them, okay? I might see At them. Two right o'clock in the morning. Well, I'm probably asleep. It's true. Mm. If I hear yeah. something, and then I look out right. the window, okay, then uh, and they're hiding I in the shadow. Away? No, they're hiding in a shadow. You have your bright porch lights on and you create shadows, right? I see. If you, I see. There's all sorts of ways to light up things correctly and there are ways to do it incorrectly. Look, if you're, if you're I'm scared a hard time. of no light, then you don't need a giant Merc light up above that's blasting out light everywhere. You could have very and inexpensive low to the ground lights, right? That just kind of light and even up. Even if you do, Scott, put a lid on it. Just just put a shield on it so it's not shining light up in the sky. So all that light's going down the ground. Paul, you're about to make me sick moving all I'm, over the greater Midwest. I'm, I'm having a hard time navigating this map. I was hoping that you would help me. Okay, what you so find? what are you trying to find? I, I can't read any of the, the names when I get close. Well, make it darker first off. You have it too I, light. <laughs> You've done something. The colors should be more brighterest. There we go. Okay. Well, oh, that's worse. Yeah. Well, so what you are actually trying to find, have to be on the map on your own computer, I think. Paul, what are you on? What are you trying to find? I'm trying to find Cameron. Missouri. Zoom out. Zoom out. Keep going till you find Kansas City. There's it's, Omaha. It's, just to, so I scroll down. See. I can see St. Joseph. There's there's Kansas City. Cameron's okay. up here, up north of it. I can see Cameron right now. Where is it? Okay, just zoom in slowly. I, I can't see anything on this map. Zoom in slowly. That's Oops. out. Keep going. Cameron's right there in the dead center. Keep going. Oregon. Kingston. Keep Keep going. Zoom in. It's right there in the middle. Keep zooming oh, in. It's off to, just off Savannah. to the middle. Savannah. Oh, there's Cameron. See, Saint. <laughs> it's hard to see. It's halfway between Saint Joseph and Chillicothe. So Winston. So where I was. What's, going, what's, what's special about this place, Ken? This is this is where I was going to go. This is the lake where he shot some. Before they decided to jack the gas prices up. But the right, prices are now back. coming down, so you're good to go. Uh, no, it's not that low. There's <laughs> lake biking. So this has got some light around it because there's people that live there, obviously. Uh, but that's click on the, it. It's like the darkest. Click where the marine is. Darkest spot I've been to. And it's a Bortle Class 4. Okay. All right. So zoom back out. Okay. How far? Till we can see Arkansas. 
I can't make it out half the time. This map's Stop. difficult for me. Stop. Go straight south from Kansas City till you I see the first Fable big blob. Now. That's Joplin. And then there's Fable Spring Girl Rogers Bentonville Bella Vista right there. So keep going. Keep going. So while you guys are finding this, I, I wanted to let you guys know that Pramvera Hyceni called me uh, and uh, uh, just uh, uh, apparently the uh, city or the, the country of Kosovo has approved her proposal for a, uh, you know, a national symposium, I guess the first of its kind hmm. in, the, in, in her country. So I think that's- Croatia? One. Is she from Co Croatia? She is, her, it's from the Astronomy Club of Kosovo. So Paul, see where Springdale is and 412, go out there yeah, west yeah. of, go out there on 412, where you, you know, go in the wrong direction, go west. Yes, you want me to go to Siloam, but remember, I go get to go out to Eureka Springs a lot, so... In fact, well, you just ask for somewhere close. I'm trying to give you somewhere close. It's got good skies. Go out west of Tiny Town. <sighs> Go west. There's Tiny Town. Keep going. See those dark blue spots out there? Yeah. There you go. That's right. It's out past Kansas. Ugh. No, it's not. No, Kansas, Oklahoma. There's a Kansas, Oklahoma? Yes. Yes. Five so we're, like three. Are we just like right up against the border between Oklahoma and yeah, Arkansas? It's a 45 minute drive. Easy. I know. Yeah, but here, good. I'm going this way. So, or go down into the Buffalo River Valley, two hours away. I'm going over here. Oh, yeah. Look how dark it gets down here. Super dark. So there's. If you go south. Berryville and Eureka. Keep going up to Holiday Island. Uh, that's Holiday Island. Yeah. Uh, and that's where I'm at. Mortal Four Skies. Where Click on the spot. Portal Class Four Skies. Real similar. It's weird because I can't see the Milky Way like I can in Kansas City. Outside of Kansas City. Well, Cameron. because... You're, there's more general light pollution around close than there is. Um, and but also, again, too, I think, I think Kansas City is drier, is drier than yeah. Arkansas is. There's a lot of humidity you know, in our be, area. Yeah. Yeah. So there's yeah. all sorts of seeing the potential, the transparency of the sky and condition of the sky. But you should be able to see the Milky Way down here. Uh, from not very far outside of town, Paul. It's... I... Mean, I, I I go out every weekend to a place that's so dark that when in Bethel Vista, which is what, six fifty miles away, mm -hmm. I can see the lightning storms even through clear skies that are happening in Bella Vista, but I still can't see the Milky Way. Don't know what to tell you, Paul. It's, you should be border class four, you should be able to see the Milky Way. Hmm. And a lightning bolt is really, really bright. It is, but it's like sixty miles. Oh, away. you can see. You know, I. You know, I, the, that's the cool thing with radar today. You can see on your phone. You can get yeah. the feed off National Weather Service and look at, and, and you can see a, a top of a cloud, you know, off to the northwest, and go, "Huh, oh, wonder where that is." You look up. It's over Wichita, you know, yeah. and we're, and where Northwest starts, it's over Wichita, five hour drive away. Yeah. So, anyway, so. this is a really good map to to start finding places to go look for dark skies around you. It gives you some ideas, you know, and you can get out in the national look forest. This, look at but the again, there's anything you face, out here I could go to. Yeah, anything along the Buffalo River, S S Steel Creek. There's one. Border class four. It's the same place you as you're lit. That you you you're out of Eureka. Find the Buffalo River, Paul. Uh, good luck. Dude, you, you're not, you're not really good with I have a hard time with, the, with this map, man. You're it, not really good with I can't with hardly everything. see it. Takes practice. That's why I was asking Kent, and he needed filler, so I thought I'd 
ask. <laughs> hey, I just ducked out for just a second, okay, to talk uh, to Prambera. Um, I knew that she was going to have exciting news, so I needed to take that. But um, That's too far away. I'm not going to go that far. Are you guys working <laughs> on the computer together? <laughs> yeah. He ran over here to do this. And I'm like, I'm I see. go that far. Oh, my gosh. Well, you know, if you live in the city, you got to drive out to where it's dark. There's really just no other way to do it. So, uh, listen to all that like echoey shouting back and forth. Sorry. Anyway, I was just trying to find something along the Eureka Springs route because that's where I'm going to be. Eureka Springs. How about Eureka Springs? It's there. This is Eureka right here, isn't it? Yeah. I've been at Eureka Springs. It's, it's, it's relatively it's dark. Berryville. That's Berryville. Yeah, Eureka's yeah. going to hit class four. It's a lot of just Yeah, yeah. you don't want to ask Kent, Dar Kent, Kent Martz about dark skies because he's going to want to take you out to where it's Bortle 1 or 2. Okay? Or it's the Bortle 3. It's really, it's really you know? inky, black, dark. Okay, so... Um, you know, I mean, still, once still you're there, the you're into those kind of skies, you'll go, oh, my God, you know, you'll be yeah. seeing the Milky Way like crazy. But um, but you don't, you know, uh, I will also say that kind of wh wh where you came out and observed with me uh, when I had my Airstream out at Marble, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Arkansas, and I we used to get fabulous uh, Milky yeah. Way skies out there. And that's about 45 minutes away. You know, and it's you know, board, and it show, it'll show up on this map as Bortle three, probably Bortle four, you know, on this map. It was, it was but, Bortle it's, four. It was Bortle yeah, four. Bortle four. But that but map, yeah, it's, also, uh, there's, uh, there's, there, it, it's only showing, I think, light that's going straight up, okay, versus light that's going out, okay, which is really a big, big problem. So you can't see, you know, totally what the uh, light pollution factors. Yeah completely like but there's no other way to do this map you know so yeah but scott you know out there marble where that night i came out with you and steven dude it was dark i mean it's it's it was nice and dark it, it was, was nice now, and dark right was it was it in nebraska or oracle dark no but by golly a 45 minute away drive from downtown springdale it was pretty stupid nice you know yeah it was it was nice yeah i was happy but, with it but to find but if you live in a light polluted area, you're going to have to plan on driving 45 minutes to an hour to get away from lights to where you can see a spectacular Charity, sky. Charity is saying, I live in a green area. I'm still looking. <laughs> yeah. I imagine yeah. she's looking at that, that map as well. Uh, but, you know, there's things that you guys can do out there. You can do little local things. And it really just takes... You know, if everybody just did, you know, controlled their own lighting, okay, uh, and um, and then you could apply some, uh, you know, put a bug in your ear to your friends, okay, so that they do something about lighting, then you know that that eventually makes a difference. So, yeah. So so you know, Scott, think globally and act locally. Worry about your front porch first. Boston, Arkansas. Wade Prince says is Bortle too. Yep, uh, I have a friend that lives down there close to uh, um, uh, Boston on Highway 16, and it is dark out there. Uh, Rose, I, I haven't seen the Milky Way either in live. This is Beatrice. Only a slight Milky Way trail when it was very clear, but that's the max I could see. Uh, Beatrice oh. lives in Belgium, and it is very, very bad. Yeah, the way uh, talking about the Ozark National Forest, the problem is it's a forest. And it's there's a lot of trees. Finding a place with a clearing where you get some skies requires a pasture or places yeah, like that. And we have a friend. It's not just the portal either. It is how transparent that sky is. Right. You know, so if you have a, humidity. a portal one and you have you know skies that are not transparent because of humidity, okay. Guess what? Yeah. No stars. So, <laughs> not so not like, at, like you would in yeah, so something that is Go ahead. Yeah. No, go ahead. I was trying not. It, we, the time lag is killing us right now. 
Right. Okay. So the thing is, is that, um, you know, if you have uh, uh, transparent skies, you can have actually a lot of light pollution and still see the Milky Way. And uh, an extreme case in point, uh, I was on Mauna Kea, 14,000 feet, and the full moon is out. You could read a book, okay? Mm -hmm. No problem by the light of the full moon. There is very little water vapor in the air. When I looked up, I could see the full moon and I could see the Milky Way at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. And that is that is freaky. that is a view that's just like burned into my brain. Yeah, you that's know? freaky to think I'm about not that right there. Sure, you can get a large enough dehumidifier. Oh, we do. It's called winter. It's called an Arctic front. There's I don't know, man. Region. Winter here is still a fantastic wet. dehumidifier. So, a little Wade was talking about um, um, Boston, Arkansas. Uh, the Buffalo National River headwaters comes out of. Boston is up on top of the of a mountain, in the in the Boston mountain range of the Ozarks, uh, the Kings River, uh, the War Eagle River, the Buffalo River, Big Piney, uh, and the Mulberry River, all rivers that people love to canoe or great canoeing rivers, all come off of that same mountain. So uh, here in Northwest Arkansas, all of those rivers are uh, fantastic. Uh, canoeing rivers, and uh, they all come off of one single mountain. So, so. I was out looking at stuff this weekend because I called Kent because I was like, where is this? Where is that? I can't find anything. And he's like, whatever, leave me alone. But So he helped me a little bit. But, <laughs> but every time we look through the telescope, and that's why I left Offred uh, his comment up, Every time I look through the telescope, and if we were using like a 25, right, and we just waited, we could see a satellite whoop, right through mm -hmm. the, the, the eyepiece. I mean, without fail, no matter where we pointed it, all of a sudden, whoop, satellite. Weird. I didn't realize there was that many up there. Offred says, with most satellites, imaging will soon be hit and miss. You know, the beautiful thing about imaging is, from and talking to some of my friends who do a lot of it, um, you know, the satellites are pretty fairly it, it, Is it going to increase your uh, work to make pretty pictures? Yes, it is. Uh, but there's techniques to get rid of the satellites, most assuredly. And uh, the cool part of them is, except when you're starting to do, you know, some deep in photography, visually they'll disappear the low earth orbit ones, when they get in the shadow of the earth, they disappear. So if you're out there in early to mid evening after dark for a couple hours, the earth's sun angle uh, allows a lot of reflection to come yeah. onto the earth. After those satellites get in the shadow, you don't see those anymore. I saw a, uh, a map. I'm going to look for it real quick. Um, it was, uh, um, what's, what's the Starlink? Starlink constellation map. Let me see. Oh I'm yeah, there. Starlink. It's it's amazing. I need eyepieces, Wade, just for the fact that I just can't see through the telescope and focus without one. I mean, I tried, but it's very blurry. Uh, I'm not set up to share screen. I just realized that. Um, so, um, uh, Paul, search for. Starlink constellation map. Okay, hang on. Pick pick one of those. Well, it's got to find it first. It's not working. Starlink constellation map. Starlink. It's phonetic, Paul. Yes. The the Google Earth wasn't, or the Google machine wasn't working that great. The Google it's machine? It's amazing how many settlers. The Google machine. Okay. Let's grab this. Copy. Add input. Web browser. Paste. 
And put this underneath you so people can see ya. Okay. Starlink. Browser. And merge. There we go. Yeah. That's astounding. How many there are? Let's go to the United States. That's what I'm doing. Or, so there we go. There's, or let's go to Europe. Let's see where Beatrice lives and see what Starlink looks like for her in Belgium. Why don't you just make it difficult, Ken? All right, here we go. There we go. So look at that train over Africa. If you, this is real time. See them moving. Yeah. That all those that are in a row, yeah. those satellites have were just uh, ejected, and they haven't dispersed to their parking orbits. Interesting. Yeah. So anyway, look at that. How about that? Over Saudi Arabia. Yep, those are just ejected and they're going to be moving in their parking orbits. It's interesting that they're allowed over China. Yes, I, you know, it's amazing. Because China government would have no control over that. Why is that? I mean, they can't shoot them down. They just, they could, they probably could block access to it. So anyway, yeah. all right, we're after five o'clock. I got to start getting ready. I got to start. Why do we have up. them out in the middle of the ocean? That's what I want to know. Because they're in orbit around the Earth. They're not in geosynchronous orbit. Oh. They're all low Earth orbit, so they're not out in space Flying where they around. appear to stay over the same spot. They're all moving in uh, uh, this is, orbit. These are Starlink satellites? Yes. Each one mm -hmm. is a Starlink satellite. So let's go move over and let's see what Northwest Arkansas looks like. That's what I'm doing. Because I have discovered that... We do not have one. Yeah, we uh -huh. do. There's you know, one the that's one getting down right across Dallas, the border. For... It's getting way across the border. Yeah. Right there, that one. Oh, that green one that's going across? Yeah. Yeah. Well, there you go. It's not really. I mean, satellites are line of sight. And you only get, what, 30, 40 miles line of sight? Something like Depends that. Depends on how high they are. Yeah, we well, said but, they're low orbit, so they're maybe a hundred miles line of sight. So I have uh, Clint Branham has is uh, got Starlink now, and uh, he is running about two hundred megabits a second. He said um, it's fine and stable, huh? You said thirty megabytes? No, oh, two hundred. Two hundred. Oh wow, that's pretty yeah. good. And and he said it works fine until there's a sudden change in the weather like a sudden thunderstorm pops up and there's a downpour and he is uh he says it'll slow down and degrade and it'll it'll reestablish <coughs> excuse me it'll reestablish and be fine and then when it stops raining it'll have to reconnect again he said really sudden change he says but if, if it's just a rain that just sort of moves into the area and rains he said it's perfectly fine Yep. So, so well, there's right. a lot of people. There's a lot of people who don't like Elon Musk, but there's a whole bunch of other campaigns out there doing the same thing. And if it was just one company, that'd be one thing. But yes. uh, there's right. the space. The space is is, is wrapped well, up in free enterprise, and nobody gets to permit what's going on. Yeah. The, uh, so. the one thing about it, though, too, is you have to think about is the people in very rural areas or like northern mexico or north africa or even in saudi arabia you would think it would be easy to get internet in the saudi arabia but it's not because of the geographic issues that they have and really bringing that amount of information to people out there in the middle of nowhere who normally wouldn't get it is actually a good thing so it's a trade-off yeah. humanity versus looking into space from the ground so, it's, so, Paul, it's a tough uh, one. I, I'm building a house out east of Pea Ridge, Arkansas, between Pea Ridge and the military park. I can't get internet at my house. There's no internet provider at my house. Starlink. I can get, that's the only answer. Uh, there's 
there's copper pairs, a copper pair available that I can tap into. You know what speeds I would get at best? Ten megs. Two. Ugh. Yeah. And I'm not I'm not I don't live in a crazy rural area. I mean I, I I'm a mile yeah. from the city limits. It's not like I'm out in rural Ozarks. Information know? is king to a better society and a better world. The more That's we true. get, the better people are gonna be off. Yep. All right, time to roll. Uh, thank Scott, you very thanks much. for joining me. Thank you. Hey, and everybody, hey, and everybody out there that's joined us, thank you for blessing us with your time. I truly yeah. feel blessed when people ask questions and, and, and have this community that we've gotten. Uh, I truly enjoy it. I will be on tomorrow at 1.30 with On the Wing, and then we'll roll into Amazon Live. And then Annie will have the 4 o'clock broadcast for Explore Alliance mm -hmm. update. Friday will be uh, focus on astrophotography. But yeah. Annie is uh, putting together a special presentation too. So, Ooh, so that's okay. great. Can, yeah. Can you tease us on what it is? It's, uh, no, I'm not out. even going to do that. It, I, I think that they're going to like it though. So, uh, tune in to find out. Okay. And then Friday, I'll do focus on astrophotography at 1 30. And then Tyler okay. will do his version of that at four. So, and I'll be out Sounds next week, although I'm going to try and broadcast if we can get good enough signal from up there a couple of times. So uh, thanks everybody for watching. Bye-bye. Thanks. Take care. Good night. Thank you.